Alrighty, welcome back for Matthew chapter 27, verse 1. Now when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to that yourself. And he threw the pieces of silver into the temple sanctuary and departed. And he went away and hanged himself. All right, so yesterday I think I got my words wrong. Um, what we need to note here is that remorse or feeling bad about doing something uh, wrong is not the same as repentance. That's what I was trying to get out uh, when we were talking about Peter. Repentance involves putting the matter directly before God and asking for his forgiveness and uh, then making a change in one's behavior. We saw Peter had tears and was crying. Um, here, Judas just kind of feels bad. Okay, verse 6. The chief priest took the pieces of silver and said, It is not lawful to put them into the temple uh, treasury, since it is the price of blood. And they conferred together, and with the money, bought the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one whose price had been set by the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Uh, this is actually um, paraphrases Zechariah chapter 11, verse 12 and 13. But the Hebrew canon was divided into three sections, law, writings, and prophets. Jeremiah came first in the order of prophetic books, so the prophets were uh, sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes collectively referred to by his name. Verse 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor questioned him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? And he did not answer him with regard to even a single charge. So the governor was quite amazed. Now at the feast, uh, the governor was accustomed to release for, for the people, any one prisoner whom they wanted. At that time, they were holding a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Verse 17. So when the people gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For he knew that because of envy they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. For last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded, uh, persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to put Jesus to death. But the governor said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Verse 22. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Crucify him. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they kept shouting all the more, saying, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing, but rather that a riot was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to that yourselves. And all the people said, His blood shall be on us and our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. But after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the Praetorium, which was the Roman governor's residence, and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they knelt down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. After they had mocked him, they took the scarlet robe off him and put his own garments back on him, and led him away to crucify him. Verse 32. As they were coming out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon, whom they pressed into service to bear his cross. And when they came to the, a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave him wine uh, to drink mixed with gall, and after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. 
The Gospel of Mark tells us that this was actually um, more like myrrh, which it was a narcotic, and Jesus wanted no interference for what he had on his mind and soul uh, set out to do. Verse 35, And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments amongst themselves by casting lots, which would be like taking sticks and breaking them up and seeing who had the smallest or biggest piece. Verse 36, And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him there. And above his head, they put up a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Verse 38. At that time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now. If he delights in him, for he said, I am the son of God. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. And it's interesting that Jesus still forgave that guy. Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, darkness fell upon all the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, this cry is a fulfillment of Psalm chapter 22, verse 1. One of uh, many striking parallels between that psalm and the specific events of the crucifixion. Christ at that moment was experiencing the abandonment and despair that resulted from the outpouring of divine wrath on him as the bearer of sin for mankind. Those were not good moments for Jesus. It was uh, pretty much the apex of his suffering. Verse 47. And some of those who were standing there, when they heard it, began saying, This man is calling for Elijah, uh, which is likely um, a reference for his, when he said, Eli, Eli, and um, due to the tone of his voice at the moment, may have sounded like Elijah to them, um, especially tying into verse 48 here. So verse 48. Immediately one of them ran, and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink uh, with intent to loosen his vocal cords. Verse 49, But the rest of them said, Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Verse 50, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielding up his spirit, and behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. Verse 52, the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion and those who were with him, keeping guard over Jesus, when they saw the earthquake and the things that were happening, became very frightened and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Many women were there looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee while ministering to him. Among them was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus, um, showing that with God, even rich men could be saved, going back to earlier in Matthew. Verse 58. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and went away. And Mary Magdalene was there and the, and the other Mary sitting opposite the grave. Now on the next day, the day after the preparation, referring to the Sabbath, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that when he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days I am to rise again. Therefore, give orders for the grave to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may come and steal him away and say to the people, He has risen from the dead and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, 
you have a guard go. Make, make it as secure as you know how. And they went and made the grave secure. And along with the guard, they set a seal on the stone. Okay, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you have a wonderful uh, weekend. And uh, keep, keep praying for the Lord to provide and, and give you uh, clarity, protection, and wisdom. All righty, God bless you. Take care.